ねえ君この辺りに扉はない扉って言ってたよねまさかまさか、はあ、君はなぜ閉じなきゃいけないでしょここ人の心の消えた寂しい場所に後ろ戸は開くんだ後ろ戸からは。Hello, and welcome to this one I want to watch spoiler casts for Mikado Shinkai's latest film, Suzume. I'm your host, Ashley Hobley. Join me today, Dylan Blight. I'm here to talk about chairs. Everybody loves talking about chairs. Ooh, talking about chairs.、Uh, yeah, so this is the latest film from the director of、uh, Your Name and Weathering with You. So, very highly anticipated,、uh, did very, perform very well in its original run in Japan. Now it is available in Australian cinemas.、Uh, so, yeah, let's just jump straight in.、Uh, so, please be aware we'll be freely discussing anything and everything about the plot themes in any of the movie. So, if you haven't watched it, come back later. With that said, let's jump to a discussion of Suzume. Let's talk about some anime.、Uh, directed by Mikado Shinkai, written by Mikado Shinkai, starring Nanoka Hara. Akuta, Matsumura, Iri, Fukutsu, Shota, Somitani, Sari Ito, Kotoni, Hanasi, Kana Hanazawa, and Matsumoto Haku II.、Uh, as the skies turn red and the planet trembles, Japan stands on the brink of disaster. However, a determined teenager named Suzume sets out on a mission to save her country. Able to see supernatural forces that others cannot, it's up to her to close the mysterious doors that are spreading chaos across the land. A perilous journey awaits as the fate of Japan rests on her shoulders. Dylan, I know, you know, normally I say, you know, put your feet up and rest, take a break, because we're going to be talking about Suzume, but you actually want to talk about this one. So, what do you think of Suzume? Yeah, I, I thought this movie was absolutely phenomenal. I think it's his best one of the, this, whatever we're calling this trilogy, the Environment disaster trilogy. <laughs> disaster trilogy. Yeah, I don't know what. I, I, yeah, I think this is the best of the, of the three.、Um, I really loved all the characters. I think it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. You know, like, oh, like from the second you start the movie, it's just the, you know, the, the shot, the little girl at the start where she's in the, the in between world thing and then. Um, just like the detail on the leaves and flowers, and just like the, the framing. It's just like there's so many moments in this film you could easily make into a, a wallpaper.、Um, yeah, all the characters are really, really good. I don't think it has any annoying or redundant characters. I love the road trip movie aspect of it, which does help separate it a lot from Weathering of You and Your Name, because both of those movies,、um, just like in one. Like, well, no, I guess one, they travel backwards and forwards, but like they centered, I guess, more on just like big city Tokyo, like a lot of them or whatever else, and、um, or one little place. Whereas this road, road trip feel in, a, in an anime movie is not something I'd say I've seen a lot of, I guess, you know?、Mm. So,、um, very Miyazaki, like probably his most Miyazaki feeling movie out of the three, I felt, especially when it came to the addition of the. What was it called? The Dijin? The, the Dijin? Whatever Dijin. the Dijin? The, the cat the keystones. King? Yeah, the keystones. His name was Dijin. Dijin, yeah. The keystones and all those elements that felt very Miyazaki to me with those sort of guardian protectors and stuff like that.、Um, music was phenomenal. I was listening to the, the soundtrack on the, the way home after finishing the movie. I went, I went straight on to search out Apple Music, so the original soundtrack was there. I was like, cool, we're on for my car trip home. <laughs> um, very emotionally gripping、uh, last act, like the revelation that she lost her mother in the 2011 tsunami. Well, it's implied, obviously, she was either swept away in the tsunami or lost in the earthquake aspect, or like you don't, you don't yeah, need to know the full details. Nothing specific, but yeah. But during that, that event, event、yeah. is the, the major cause like, that brings it home. I, I, and I, I think this movie is a lot more blunt. In his previous two, when it comes to what it's about and the sort of, well, I guess yes and no. Weathering Review is very much like 
environmental change that's coming. That's fucked, hey. Um, but this mm-hmm. one, like playing, playing, obviously a lot closer to home, and I, and you know, I'm someone where people who live in Australia. These aren't like these. I remember seeing these the 2011 tsunami on the news, and like obviously it was this massive thing. But that that's solely watching on the news and and whatnot. Yeah. So I can't imagine watching this movie and actually being someone who lives in Japan and like how that must make you through feel that, and yeah. affect you and live through that on your family. Like I, I yeah, so. Yeah, I, I, I think it's one of the best movies of the year so far. Absolutely, really, really loved it. Yeah, I think it's, it's really great as well. I don't know if I put it over your name. I just feel like that is such, that, you know, just hit at the right time for the right, what I wanted. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's very good, very well animated. Um, just, you know, big, fantastical ideas. It's definitely the most fantastical story he's told uh which i feel like is where the miyazaki element is coming from like it's got a talking cat that is trademark (laughs) miyazaki um yeah and it 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 works so well and it's it it's crazy that there's this fantastical story but set in such a modern time where uh especially they've got this whole instagram thing happening at the same time where this cat is being photographed by every single person yep. apparently across the country so they're able to track where it's going uh, meanwhile she's trying to keep uh keep people from noticing that she's got she's uh gone around with a talking moving chair um incredible i think this is also probably the funniest of these these three my films. entire cinema burst into laughter i don't know if your how many people was in your cinema oh, it know? was Packed. mine was actually rather full I, there was more people in this than my mario screen I, I was at like a tuesday uh like beforehand like one of the first screenings in australia yeah. thing so it, there's like every single row had people in it wow yeah. you know so so everyone in my place burst out like there was a lot of chuckles throughout but the moment that cracked everyone up was the car part so where they like they crash the car at the end, and then after complaining it was broken, they just have the most slapstick <laughs> comedy part of that thing coming out and actually like fitting in properly. And then he says uh, his stupid line, it's and fixed. then the door <laughs> is fixed. Oh yeah, nice. And then the door falls off. Everyone in my cinema like just burst out with that moment. So yeah, very funny movie. Very funny. All the like the little kids with the chair. Yeah, you know? that's very funny. Uh, and Susan May wanting a ride, and then just flat out say no. Thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just uh, yeah. I think it's interesting how you know Blunt it tackles the the tsunami and like obviously uh it, how that affects her life and uh, um, I mean this is a movie that introduces the idea of all these uh doors throughout the country and like it introduces the idea that there's a, in another world there's a giant worm that is trying to destroy everything mm. and that. It's totally understandable. They only they give you enough to completely understand it. They don't really go into depth too much. Other than he need they need to go around, do these special movements and lock these keys, say these special words to lock it away. Um Yeah, I think you know I the worm is in you know, obviously it that is very three D. I think that was the Maybe one of the things that kind of stood out is like it's done. Oh, when you watch like... the credits, it's done like the animators are different than the main animators, so it has yeah, an animation have... team. Yeah, so it doesn't look quite the same as you know everything else, but I think for the most part, it looks really great. Um, yeah, just a beautiful story. I I feel like the ending doesn't quite land. Um, there's way. a couple of elements just pop out of. There's two things that just pop out of nowhere. There's the the side dodge in, the other keystone, no, who suddenly shows the, up, possesses. Let's talk about the keystone. Aunt. The whole movie, like yeah, but he shows up, possesses his her aunt, and makes her say all these terrible things. Uh, something that the other one didn't do any point during the movie. No, I, but I took it as the the gods that like as gods are portrayed in other and even other mediums, is that sometimes they're just dicks yeah they just do what they want right like and they act in weird ways and like this one doing that and having her get her emotions out you could be like oh man he did such an evil thing but in reality when you watch it when you think back at the end of the movie it was actually good because it put everything on the plate and they were able to everything discuss that table, and yeah. it helped them become susan may become closer to her, her aunt so you tell me if that was actually a bad thing or not hmm. 
I know. It just felt like it was out of nowhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it was. It was supposed to feel out of nowhere. That was the point, I think. So. <laughs> yeah. What uh, other then the other thing is the time travel element at the very end. No, nah, I guess that straight away. Yeah. That was, that was easy. That was the most... Pretty, like, the dude's done time travel before. I guess that five seconds into the movie. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That was easy pick. The rest I had to learn as a go, but yeah, that, that being her and she gave herself the thing. No, nah, that was easy. I was like, you done... I've seen this before, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah lots of really cool animation lots of like fun little characters and side stories uh you know just them rescuing these mandarins and then being able to get uh her family like just, thank you for night. saving all these mandarins here have a completely free stay in this inn and a ton of food and yeah, it has uh, a very um i guess like having the road trip thing and having her meet so many different people across japan the the movie also even though it's animated it does have a very good job at showing the different typography and like locales of japan in the northern and southern areas and like the differences between like somewhere like tokyo and where she starts like in a smaller yeah. village sort of place but also it the movie does have a very sort of wholesome thing of like we look up, we look after our own in Japan, or you know, like if you, good, there are good people. Sure, there's bad, but there are some really good people in Japan. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it just has that sort of. I mean, there's yeah, there's all these people who help her along her journey and yeah. stuff, like take her on a car ride, like halfway across the country. Um, yeah, I think yeah, it it definitely helped to like show the geography of Japan. It's like she's also like doing that tracker of like how far from home yeah they always show them up which i really appreciated because you know as people from not from japan i really appreciated having a visual thing sign of where they were what was happening and it was sort of worked though because she also never left her home well other than when she moved um as a kid but she's never like as a as an older like uh what however old she is i assume she's like 16 17 16 what i guess yeah. yeah um the she's never obviously gone out so she's is so interested herself and i'm interested as a viewer and as someone who like is interested in japan i guess as a as a place um that yeah showing the map and just where you're going but also made the thing that mount fuji bit very funny yeah. to me like the just I sleeping past go, yeah <laughs> sleeping past seeing it i'm like yeah i feel that like i'd be pissed if i missed seeing mount fuji on the train as well so <laughs> yeah uh yeah really good so i guess going into this you're like man it's, it's a story a love story between a, a girl and a chair uh, did the so love story I, I, work for you here's my question had you watched the trailer yeah i hadn't oh okay no so i hadn't watched the trailer I, so I how did you know there was a chair because i know I, I, I've, like i've seen jokes i've seen the, okay, the yeah. bits i've seen people tweet and i've seen the poster and i'd seen some screenshots or you know like just general stuff pop up on twitter over the last like six to eight months as it came in japan and stuff so i knew that the the running bit about the movie was it was a love story about a girl in a, in a at a chair I, I and that's all i did and i'd seen but i never watched the trailer so i came in with little to fuck all knowledge which is great yeah because every now and then in a world where we do all these podcasts and write and stuff like that it's like mm. it is enjoyable to really just go into something where i knew i wanted to watch it anyway because yeah because you the, went in pretty close to blind yeah and it was very enjoyable because i was like i don't know fucking anything that's going on okay. this movie. yeah it's great so the, the, the love story work for you? Uh, yeah, I appreciate that it's this. I I mean, it's got that element of like I'm still like I don't think it like falls into the category of being weird. Like I, I don't know how old he's supposed to be and she's supposed to be, but they never like actually. She's a university like, student, so like 21, 16. Yeah, so like technically it's weird. Japan's different. Japan, though, so. but then they never actually do anything. So I don't know. It's just it's fine. Um. Yeah, it worked. I feel like they those characters they grow, they grow attached. He doesn't. He's not actually a dick. He doesn't. Yeah, and again, like because they don't really, really do anything, and he's like, "I'll come back and see you later," and whatever else. Yeah. And also, I assume the part at the end is like a year or maybe two years later. Like she's got a completely yeah. different uniform on. I think she's now graduated from to the next gap sure. of schooling or whatever is how I took it. So maybe she's now old enough for me to not be like, "This is illegal in some countries." But anyway, um, the. <laughs> the yeah it worked and i think all the chair stuff as it looks really weird if out of context and it sounds really weird out of context but in context it's never it's not always romance it's just she falls in love with him for him because he's a chair yes. which sort of has a 
even more romantic element to it, as <laughs> I guess, yeah. than really anything. So, um, but I mean, there's also just so many. The chair bit is so stupid, but it works so well, it, even just for comedic timing of parts. The fact that first chase scene with the cat up onto the the up onto the uh, let me the just boat. jump in and say the sound design in this. Yeah, the, 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 fucking like amazing. The tapping or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Just the <laughs> sound of the chair legs on the ground. It's that like, part where they like get up to the top of the boat and they're like facing off like they're about to have a showdown battle. I found very funny. Yes. Yeah. And then he just jumps off into another <laughs> faster boat. Yeah. Just jumps off into a fucking speedboat. <laughs> what a dick. Uh yeah, I think, you know, the story of like the of him being a chair, that's cool. And just him the slow, I guess like existential like crisis he's having of like kind of uh you know he's like soccer from Pervenum's all in where you know he suddenly disappears when he's not you know awake i guess it's, goes also somewhere very, else. it's so sad but so funny because the chair just falls over <laughs> it's, just... it's like are you awake yeah. <laughs> um you know, and then her thinking you know to kiss it to get him back yeah. yeah, I don't know if he ever knew because she never. And then even it. the flashback where she's like talking to her mom is like, "You're gonna put a face on the chair," mm. Mm. and then that becoming important and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, lots of interesting elements and uh, again the soundtrack by uh, Rad Wimps and uh, I had somebody else writing a lot of the music. Um, Kazumi, Kazumi, Kazuma Jinochi. Jinochi, yeah. It's really fantastic. I love the the use of vocals. Like in you know, there's the the track which is like do 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the one I was humming all the way home. Um yeah. and I they use that in the trailer and stuff, but yeah. Ah, okay. So even though the one that so that plays right at the end of the credits, or there was another song that uh, even yeah, like, there was like a, a Suzume song at the end. Suzume song at the end that was also very good. And then, there's, yeah, there's a, yeah. I think my entire audience just sat through the credits. Mm. Yeah, you know, listening to the music. Well, also, the lights didn't come up till the. <laughs> no, they didn't for me either until the very end. So I was like, whatever, yeah. cool. Um, but you got the full song, which was awesome, but also just the the different animated stuff to show them going around on yeah. the way. The home trip, I also thought was very cool. Yeah, that was a very nice touch. Just introducing her aunt to everyone on the, the way back. On yeah. the trip and like her yeah. thanking everybody. Um, Oh, the other thing, like the i the actual idea of like abandoned doors, I guess, is mm. well, it's, very it's, interesting, and it's only it's very specific to Japan. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say it's very specific. Well, I guess Japan. there's there's always been ruins in like different yeah. places. I there guess, would be so, stuff in America, but like, too, but like out, it's not really a thing in Australia, which makes it even more interesting. You know? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, with Japan and like, you know, they they seem very happy to just abandon like. A lot of buildings. Well, I mean, uh, to a degree, if, a lot of them are like anything that was touched by nuclear has <laughs> like a very long window of time. That's a fair point. Can, um, yeah, because yeah. there's it's interesting because there's like trucks at one point, like when they're doing they're driving. Um, there's like trucks with like it's contaminated dirt and that kind of stuff that they. Yeah, so there was like a nuclear area. There was a there's which is where they go at the end, obviously, because that's where the 2011 tsunami thing. Some of the yeah. other ones you can sort of you would have to guess and read between the lines, like. Were these from other natural disasters? Were these from war? You know, like what? Yeah. Like, I don't, they, some of the other ones are definitely not all. The, the one at the end, the major thing. Because like the is school the, was like a landslide or something. Like, yeah, the landslide. Out, yeah, so. yeah. They, they say that. So it's all that different ones. But then but, the amusement parks in, in another interesting one where it's like, mm. it, they just couldn't afford to tear it down. Yeah. So then so. it turned into a. Abandoned yeah. thing. Yeah. And that, that whole sequence was really cool. Okay. You know? The chair running along the roller coaster, <laughs> diving across. Her on the Ferris wheel trying to close the door. And then the power goes out, and I question how the Ferris wheel got back down to ground. Um, physics, Momentum, maybe? They're, heavy, but... they're heavier, so they would... I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. Is that how the, that works? If there's no ended power? Yeah, there's no brakes? I have no idea. No... Wind? <laughs> they got lucky? It's lucky, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, very cool. Anything else you want to talk about from Suzume? No, it was very, very good. Um, excited to watch it again at home when it releases yeah. digitally, I reckon. I, don't, I know it's probably terrible to say, but I'd be keen to check it out dubbed as well. 
No, I don't think it's terrible. Sorry, because what's uh, they've got uh, Nicole Sakura from Superstore. She voices Suzume, and then Josh King voices the dude. I feel like once I've watched it normally, it's hard to then watch the dub one where like a lot of the other when we did the Miyazaki, like uh, the Studio Ghibli stuff, a lot of those earlier films I watched dubbed the first time, so then I find it weird to watch subbed. The other way. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll watch it the other way because then I don't have to pay 100% full attention. Mm. Yeah. That kind of stuff, so. Uh, yeah. Susan May, let us know what you thought of the film uh, by going to explosion.com slash Twitter or jump to Discord at explosion.com slash Discord. Uh, if you want to help us out here at What Do You Want to Watch, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. Leave us five stars. Anyone anyway, can leave five stars or just tell people about the show. Uh, yeah. And if you enjoyed this episode, thoughts with a dollar, head on over to our Kofi page at explosion.com slash support. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time, keep watching stuff, I guess. <laughs> あいつは自分の扱いが雑なんだよ。あんたはなんか大事なことをしてるような気がする。お返しします。お返しします。行ってらっしゃい。行ってらっしゃい。行ってらっしゃい。行ってらっしゃい。行ってきます。